It's Game Boy World, and this is Mercenary Force. Jazz record publisher Meldak didn't dabble in video games very long, but the few years they slummed it in interactive entertainment left behind quite a remarkable legacy of games. Weird games, unique games, interesting games. Meldak is probably best known for Zombie Nation, a strange NES shoot 'em up in which players take the role of a giant flying samurai head, soaring through modern landscapes. It wasn't a popular game in its day, for obvious reasons, and because of that it has become one of the rarest and most expensive NES titles collectors have to pony up for to get into their collections. We, of course, know Meldak as the publisher who gave Game Boy one of its most venerable releases, a port and remake of 1979's seminal trap em up Heian Kyo Alien. Their second Game Boy release, April 1990's Mercenary Force, is much less bizarre than those other Meldak products, and yet it still sees the publisher plying certain familiar themes. Both Zombie Nation and Heian Kyo Alien featured an emphasis on traditional Japanese lore and figures. The former had its massive spectral samurai face, the latter concerned a Heian era policeman trying to save feudal Japan from alien invaders by burying them in holes. Mercenary Force goes all in on classic Edo era Japan, taking the form of a side scrolling shooter in which the player controls a group of four warriors drawn from various walks of life common to ancient Japan. Besides the obligatory samurai and ninja, you also have a peasant, a Shinto princess, and a Buddhist monk. Unlike Zombie Nation, though, Mercenary Force isn't your typical flying through the air kind of shooter. Instead, your party is seen from a three quarters force perspective as they advance along the ground, similar to The Legend of Zelda. Or if you really want to put a fine point on it, it's very similar to Konami's Goemon series. Back in the 90s, we didn't see too many games in America based in ancient Japan, and the wooden structures and traditional statuary that comprised the battlefield in Mercenary Force will probably remind American gamers of a certain age of the backgrounds that appeared in Mystical Ninja for Super NES, one of the few games that didn't have its classical Japanese aesthetic whitewashed. Although, apparently, Mercenary Force only barely escaped that fate. A Lost Levels forum thread from several years ago figured out that an unreleased NES-era game promoted as an upcoming title under the name Ultima Shots was in fact a potential reskin of Mercenary Force. For whatever reason, that plan evidently fell through and Meldak published the game themselves, changing the Japanese title from Tenjin Kaisen to the more Anglophone-friendly Mercenary Force. But the name was basically all they altered in translation, resulting in one of the most unique games to hit the Game Boy in the US. The idea of controlling a party of adventurers in an auto-scrolling shooter wasn't totally unheard of. Nintendo fans may be reminded of the mediocre Squaresoft published King's Knight for NES, or Taito's cult favorite Kiki Kai Kai, aka Pocky and Rocky. It also bears more than a passing similarity in format and theme to the infamous, misunderstood, proto-strategy game Pokoska Wars, in which players marched forward while gathering an army. Pokoska Wars is probably best known and hated for its Famicom port, but it actually began life as a computer game, and given Meldak's previous work with the ancient PC game Heian Kyo Alien, it doesn't seem impossible to think Mercenary Forces developers might have drawn some inspiration from that seminal PC title as well. Unlike any of those games, however, Mercenary Force is pure action and uses a horizontal scrolling format rather than vertical, offering a few unique elements to help distinguish itself. Mercenary Force allows you total customization of your warrior troop. Your team consists of four fighters, but you can hire them from a pool of five different classes. You can recruit more than one of each class, too. And in combat, you can alter your formation on the fly to deal with the current scenery and challenges. Money becomes an important factor in the game because, after all, you are hiring mercenaries. Each class has a different cost, the cheapest being the villager and the most expensive being the monk. And while you can collect cash from fallen foes, the money they drop despawns quickly, forcing you to dart forward and put your team at risk to gather money. You can spend your cash on a surprising variety of things. You can hire replacement recruits between levels, and you can also duck into certain buildings in the battlefield, fantasy zone style. Shops offer health boosts, fortune readings, and even the ability to promote your lead party member into a monk. The cash drops are pretty stingy. This isn't like River City Ransom where tougher enemies give up more coinage, so you really have to work hard to avoid running out of money altogether by the game's midpoint. That's assuming you can even make it that far, of course. Mercenary Force is an incredibly challenging game. With six auto-scrolling stages, a full playthrough takes about 20 minutes to complete, but you'll be lucky to beat even the first level in your first playthrough of the game. Enemies appear in huge numbers, constantly marching onto the screen in a variety of formations, and each foe has a different attack pattern. Initially, you primarily face off against other humans with the same capabilities as your own mercenaries, but once you reach stage two, the enemy forces grow far more bestial and supernatural in nature. 
In a neat touch, the enemies who appear in the same mercenary classes as your own party use the exact same skills that you do. The one exception is that there don't appear to be any enemy priestesses. So instead you face off against Komuso priests, who wear baskets on their heads and have the incredibly dangerous ability to fire homing shots. Eventually though you take on frogs and flying squirrels and then mystical beings like dragons and animated skeletons. The one rule you can count on is that the further you advance, the deadlier your opposition becomes. Your own team is grossly outnumbered, but the mercenary force does have two things working in its favor. Your warriors can take a few hits, unlike enemies, and you can change formation at will. Each mercenary you recruit has a certain health value. Not surprisingly, the inexpensive peasant class can soak up the fewest hits, while pricier warriors like monks and samurai can absorb the most punishment. You can restore lost hit points with food at shops and recruit replacement units between stages. Helpfully, food can boost your fighter's health beyond its default maximum, up to 30 points. Each class also has its own attack pattern. Peasants carry Tagashima matchlock rifles, while samurai fire arrows, an accurate reflection of Japanese cultural stratification on the battlefield around the time of the Tokugawa era. Meanwhile, ninja flings shuriken straight ahead just like the other classes rifles and arrows. It's the monk and priestess that offer the greatest strategic depth and require the most finesse to control. Monks fire twin beams of force at 45 degree angles, while priestesses emit twin bolts of flame at 90 degree angles. While recruiting these classes into your team weakens your forward firepower, they can be invaluable for dealing with advanced enemy formations or for taking out hazards that sit outside the direct field of fire. With the press of a button, you can rotate your team between four different formations, each named for different elements. The fire formation brings your team into a narrow line that concentrates attack power while minimizing your profile. Meanwhile, the diamond-shaped wind formation gives you a huge spread of attack power but increases your group's vulnerability by making it harder to avoid enemy projectiles. Each formation is dynamic and you can alter its shape by pressing up against fixed objects. Even the wind formation can be reduced to a slim line if you force everyone against nearby walls. You also don't have to worry about the team members being killed if they're stuck behind a rock as the screen advances. They'll be forced back into the main lane, although this happens somewhat slowly and leaves them vulnerable to attack. Mastering the formation arts is really key to success here. Not only knowing when to switch to a specific shape, but also where to place your party members. While it's tempting to put a samurai in the lead with his high endurance and wide double arrow shot, leading with a monk or priestess can save you a lot of headaches in the long run thanks to their ability to take out foes at an angle. The game offers a lot of viable formations and strategies. I had remarkable luck by going into the field with a single warrior beefed up to max health with food purchases, though you're in trouble if that solo fighter comes up against a situation for which it's poorly suited. In any case, it's essential to keep a priestess on hand for the final boss, assuming you can make it that far. I couldn't. Turns out the priestess is the supposedly abducted princess in disguise, and bringing her along earns you the best ending. It's a challenging, unique, and entertaining shooter. Despite the platform's technological limitations, Mercenary Force plays well. The Game Boy really strains to handle so many characters and their projectiles, but it very thoughtfully gives sprite priority to enemy bullets and to your heroes, so you rarely take a hit from a hazard that couldn't be seen. What's really impressive is that Mercenary turned out so well despite being developed by Lenar. You may never have heard of Lenar, but you're probably familiar with their most infamous game, Deadly Towers for NES, an early action RPG whose ambitions badly outstripped its creator's capabilities. Mercenary Force is a far more solid, not to mention less oblique, creation than that benighted NES game. Honestly, it does pretty much everything right, even if it does demand considerable practice for mastery. But hey, that's how we ruled in the old days. Unlike, say, Ninja Boy, Mercenary Force doesn't come by its difficulty level through shoddy production and design. It's a versatile game that offers a lot of strategic depth to the player, but it also demands you properly master all those options. Lenar's co-developer on Mercenary Force was Live Planning, a company that spun out of Meldak itself and helped with the production on many of the publisher's projects, including this, Hey Ankyo Alien, and Zombie Nation. Live Planning eventually became Kaze and stuck around until the PlayStation 2 era, though their only creation to make its way outside of Japan after this was the somewhat random anime-licensed pinball game Akira Psycho Ball. With its unique premise and flexible shooter mechanics, Mercenary Force stands as one of the strongest releases we've seen to date for Game Boy. It even had great box art in the US, which is a rarity. With its high contrast graphical art style and muted color palette, it looks for all the world like a KFM DM album cover. It even uses immigre typefaces, making it super trendy for the era. And Meldak's affection for Japanese tradition still shines through despite the Euro techno design. You can see the first two kanji characters of the game's Japanese title, Tinjin Kaisen, emblazoned on the samurai's helmet. 
With its unconventional design and solid production values, Mercenary Force is a real standout in this puzzle-glutted era of Game Boy releases. It's a cult favorite at best, but it has gained a little more visibility in recent years thanks to being featured in Game Center CX and through the power of word of mouth. It's definitely a gem worth hunting down. For more welcome oases and an ocean of puzzle mediocrity, keep watching Game Boy World, and please help support the project. Next on Game Boy World, a happy Thanksgiving indeed. Thank you.